Hello, I'm Dr. Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation, Pain, and Fatigue Laboratory. And today I want to give a quick update on our current clinical trials and where we're at with them and how long it's going to take to finish those. And also I want to talk about my general plans for upcoming clinical trials. Uh, I'm going to mention the ones that are currently recruiting. This isn't an advertisement for clinical trials, but I will put in the description a link to the screenings in case someone wanted to fill out their information for one of these trials. So the first one we have is uh, the psilocybin for fibromyalgia, and that's psilocybin from psilocybic mushrooms. And I'm working with Peter Hendricks from the Department of Psychiatry on this project, and it is psilocybin for fibromyalgia pain. And this one is only in uh, biological females. And we are basically testing whether psilocybin, one full dose, uh, a macro dose, can change fibromyalgia pain, specifically if it can reduce fibromyalgia pain. And we think it may do this by acting on serotonergic channels that may be dysregulated in fibromyalgia. Now, the thing we're doing that's a little bit different in our trial, I guess a couple of things. One is there's no psychotherapeutic or guidance component to it. I think a lot of groups build in therapy with the uh, medicine, and we're not doing that. We just want to know if it works pharmaceutically without the therapy portion. Um, if it doesn't, then we may try it with the therapy session, which is the way it's more typically used. But we'll see. I just wanted to make sure, um, I wanted to be sure, I guess, uh, whether it is or is not a just effect on serotonin systems. And so we'll find that out with this design. Uh, the other thing that's unique about our trial is we can't use a passive placebo because you would know whether you're getting psilocybin or a placebo. And so we had to have an active placebo, which is dextromethorphan, and it causes effects that can be similar to psilocybin, especially to someone who hasn't tried both of those. So it helps control for expectancy because they're not sure what they've gotten. And that helps us make sure that, you know, it's not just because they believe that this will have this profound effect. We're actually looking for authentic changes to the pain system and having an active placebo helps us do that. So anyway, we're, I don't want to spend too much time talking about each project, but this is a local trial. As you've heard me talk about before, I try to do remote studies wherever possible. This is not one of those cases. Of course, we can't ship a Schedule One drug across state lines to people's houses. We are nowhere near doing that at this time. So this has to be done at my institution here at University of Alabama, Birmingham. We're about halfway done, just short of halfway finished. And so I expect we'll be done in the first quarter of 2025, and then we'll have some more news about whether it works or not. So that's our main pharmaceutical trial right now. Now on the botanical side, we have three botanicals that we're testing, and these are for pain and fatigue and cognitive symptoms in Gulf War illness. Now the first one is curcumin, and curcumin is a component of turmeric, and this has some really, it has so many different effects, but I'm looking at mostly for their effect on microglia in the brain in reducing central inflammation. And we're about one third enrolled with that study. So I think we'll be done enrolling by the end of 2025. So just a short kind of update on that one. The second one is stinging nettle, and this is the crushed up stinging nettle plant. And it's particularly good against inflammation and pain. This one, I think we're about halfway done recruiting. So we'll be done somewhere in 2025 as well. And the third one is resveratrol. And this is the component of grapes and a few other um, sources, so some other fruits. It's a very strong antioxidant, among other things. And my pilot data that I've run previously suggested it, it works really well for pain and fatigue and cognitive issues. And we're about half recruited for that as well. So we should have updates again in 2025. No way we'll have it done in uh, 2024. And it may get a bit into 2026 to have everyone finish because these are long trials. They're 10-month trials. So even when we recruit and get everyone enrolled, 
you know, it's almost a year before they finish. So we'll still be running this for a while. Uh, we're also running a small pilot trial of vagus nerve stimulation. And, you know, I've, I haven't done vagal nerve stuff for the past 20 years because I didn't like the fact that it had to be implanted. Now we can do it um, without the implanted device. It can be done non-invasively and get the same results. So uh, now I'm eager to try it in chronic fatigue syndrome and long COVID. And the idea is restoring parasympathetic balance, which may be disrupted in chronic fatigue syndrome and MECFS. You know, it can help with things like anxiety and depression, but even if they don't have those symptoms, it can help with heart palpitations, it can help with general inflammation and with central inflammation. So I really think it's something that needs to be uh, targeted. Now, I can't talk much about this one until I get preliminary data. I honestly don't know if it's going to work for MECFS or CFS or related conditions. We just have to run it and we have to see. So I'll be talking more about that later. This is another one that is local only because you have to come in for the sessions. So um, we're only taking people that are really close to our institution and they can come from multiple sessions because it's, it's more than one session. Now, if it looks good, we'll get more money and we'll make it more, uh, we'll expand the range and, and possibly even uh, try to make it remote somehow, although I have to think about how that would be done. So more on that later. So those are our active trials. Uh, so really just four clinical trials, or I guess five trials that are actively recruiting right now. I'm working really hard on expanding the trials. That's why I'm writing grants constantly because I really want to be running at least twice as many clinical trials simultaneously. So we're constantly getting out information that may be useful to people. So I'm really churning out the grant applications, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, as I've said before, it's why the videos are a little shorter because I got to get back to writing the grants. But anyway, my plan for 2025 and into 2026 is really running, as I said, a lot more clinical trials. And it's going to be roughly a third pharmaceutical. It's going to be a third botanicals and it'll be a third interventional, roughly. And interventional is things like vagus nerve stimulation, uh, stellate ganglion block, and uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So I'll talk about those later. And also, you could check out my older videos. A lot of these I've, I've touched on at least uh, a little bit. So I'm going to get back to writing uh, the grants now and get those out. Sometimes they have very short deadlines that we're working with, and they can be very large grants. So they're keeping me very uh, occupied. So I just want to say uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, staying tuned to the videos. And I want to give a special big thank thanks to the volunteers to these studies. As I've mentioned before, these clinical trials have to have patients. And so we're very grateful for the people who volunteer their time and are willing to try what is, in essence, an experimental therapeutic. We don't know if it's going to work because it hasn't been tested before. And so I'm, I'm really glad there's so many people that are willing to give these things a chance and uh, also, you know, try something new and, and use that information and use themselves to get information out to the overall population. So uh, thank you, everyone. And I will be back on Monday with more news.